All right, good day, everybody. We are going to work today on some probability. In particular, we're going to be working on probability involving independent events, and we're going to look at the product rule that can be used along with uh, independent events. The goal here is that you're going to be able to use the product rule to determine the likelihood of two independent events both occurring in a single trial of an experiment. All right, use the product rule to determine the likelihood of two independent events both occurring in a single trial. Well, we got to do some definitions first, of course. We have to know what independent events are. And the big thing I want to emphasize to you right now is that independent and mutually exclusive mean different things. I'll emphasize that a little bit more, assuming I remember to here in a moment. But here's the definition for events that are independent. Events A and B are independent if the outcome of one does not affect the outcome of the other. Or rather, the occurrence of one does not affect whether the other event occurs. All right, now a non-mathematical example, I suppose, of independent events, just to be silly, I suppose, um, is that if it, the, the breakfast that you eat, for instance, it one day doesn't affect whether your favorite team wins a soccer match that night, right? Those things are completely independent of one another. All right, you might eat some waffles and they win. You might eat cereal and they lose, but it's not what you chose to eat that affected whether your team won or lost. All right, mathematically, when we're talking about events that are independent, some examples would be that you roll a die and you toss a coin. Now, maybe those two things are part of the same experiment, but if you get a five from rolling a standard die, that doesn't affect whether you get heads or tails when you toss a coin. All right, another example of some independent events might be that you draw a card from a standard deck, you put it back in the deck, and then you draw a second card again. So, for instance, maybe you draw the seven of hearts the first time, but since you put it back in the deck, your second draw could just as easily be the seven of hearts again, right? So the outcome of the first draw doesn't affect the outcome of the second draw, and that means then that those are independent events. Some not examples, kind of along a similar train of thought, might be that you draw a card and then you draw another without putting it back in the deck. Because, for instance, say you drew the seven of hearts the first time, if you don't put it back in the deck, there's no way you can get that again. And so the outcome of the card you choose on the second draw is affected by, the, by what you got on the first draw. All right, a non-math example. I'll use food and sports a moment ago. If you were the one playing in the soccer game, what you ate for breakfast act might actually affect the outcome. Does that make sense? All right, so those would be examples of dependent events. Now, mathematically, there's what's called the product rule for independent events that you're going to learn, a way to determine if two events are independent using their probabilities. And, well, this is how that goes. If A and B are independent events, then the probability that both events occur, the probability of the intersection of A and B occurring, is equal simply to the product between the probabilities of A and B. Okay, so the probability of A and B equals the probability of A times the probability of B. That only works when two events are independent. If they are dependent events, then you have to use what's called conditional probability to be able to find the probability of both events occurring. Now, we'll get to that into the next section, but this equation is the one that we're working with in this video. Well, let's look at a couple of examples then. Let's say that four cards are chosen from a standard deck with replacement. So after you draw a card, you put it back in the deck. What is the probability of choosing a face card each time? All right, now I'll show some work here in a moment, but I want to show you the notation that I'm going to use. I'm going to say that F represents getting a face card, and I want to find the probability that we get a face card card for the first draw, a face card for the second draw, a face card for the third draw, and a face card for the fourth draw. And the probability of all those things happening, assuming these are independent events, would be multiply the probability of getting a face card the first time by the probability of getting a face card the second time, and so forth. So are these independent events? Well, yeah. Since you're putting the card that you're drawing back in because of the replacement, each draw is independent of the prior draw. So, we can just do the probability of getting a face card the first time times the probability of getting a face card the second time 
times the probability of getting the face card the third time and the fourth time. So we've got a formula that we're going to use, but we need to know how to find the probability of getting a face card on each of those individual draws, and that's going to require us to understand our sample space and how many face cards there are in a deck. Since it is a standard deck, we're assuming that there are 52 cards to choose from. Now, face cards. Well, a king, a queen, and a jack are each face cards. Those are the only face cards in the deck. And you have four of each of those. There's four kings, there's four queens, and there's four jacks, which means that there are a total of 12 face cards in the deck. Good. So then the probability of getting a face card is 12 over 52. You can, of course, simplify that to 3 over 13. And isn't that going to be the same for every one of these draws? All right, because we're replacing the card, you always have a 3 and 13 chance of getting a face card. So rather than writing 3 over 13 times 3 over 13 times 3 over 13 times 3 over 13, let's put 3 over 13 to the fourth power. That's going to be the probability of getting those four face cards consecutively. And then just do 3 to the fourth power over 13 to the fourth power, and you've got it. Now, so that's 81 out of 28,000. 561. Now, as a percentage, I'm just curious what this is. Yeah, that's uh, two tenths of a percent of the time you can expect to get four consecutive face cards when you draw with replacement. All right, excellent. Hopefully that makes some sense to you. That's using independent events. Let's do one more example here in this video. I'm telling you that two events A and B are such that this is the probability of A and this is the probability of B. And this is the probability of either A or B occurring. And I want us to determine whether A and B are independent. Well, in order to determine whether A and B are independent, what I want to know is whether the probability of both occurring equals the probability, the product of the probabilities of each one. In other words, this is the question that we need to answer right there. Now, how do we answer that? Well, it's easy enough to multiply the probability of A times the probability of B, isn't it? Because we have both of those things. So we'll say the probability of A times the probability of B is equal to 0 0.28. That's what you get for 0 0.7 times 0 0.4. But how do we determine, without using this rule, what the probability of A and B both occurring is? Well, that's why I gave you the probability that either event occurs. This could be a problem that you approach with a Venn diagram, but I'm hoping you remember there's a formula that kind of relates the four quantities that we are using here. The three given quantities here, the probability of A and B, the probability of either one of them, and the probability of both of them occurring. Remember the addition rule that we've been working with in previous sections, which says this, that the probability of either A or B occurring is equal to the sum of their probabilities minus the probability that both occur. And all we're going to do then is we're going to use some substitution here. We know the probability of either one occurring is 0 0.82. And we know the probabilities of A and B occurring. And what we can do then is we can use this formula to find out what is the probability that both of them occur. Just solve it for the probability of A and B. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add this to both sides right there. So I'll get the probability of A and B on the left. And then that will give me 1.1, if I go ahead and add the 0.7 to the 0.4 together, minus 0 0.82, which happens to be 0 0.28. So we were able to show the probability of both events occurring was 0 0.28, and we also have already shown the probability of A times the probability of B is equal to 0 0.28. That indicates that those two events, A and B, are independent of one another. All right, so there you have it. That's working with independent events and the, pro the product rule associated with independent events. All right, guys, we'll see you next time. Bye.